we're in the midst of merchandising. We're a buyer and a seller. And we need to know how to look at two different points of view because of that. In today's homework problem, you were both things. Sometimes you were the buyer, sometimes you were the seller. In the exercise that I'd like to work with you today, we're going to be both. Would you turn in your books with me to exercise 5-4? It's on page 242 in the book. The entries are described for both the buyer and the seller. We could do all the buyer's transactions and stop, begin again, and do all the seller's transactions. There's absolutely nothing wrong with doing it that way. That would be perfectly acceptable. But I thought that if we did these side by side, that we would be able to compare them and contrast the two points of view a little better. This is not to confuse you, this is to enlighten you, to make you better because of the process. I invite you to read exercise 5-4 with me. On June 10th, N Company purchased $8,000 of merchandise from J Company, FOB Shipping Point. Let's talk about FOB Shipping Point. Who pays the freight when it's FOB Shipping Point? Buyer or seller, don't say anything. That's think time. Who pays the freight when it's FOB Shipping Point? Say something. Buyer. Buyer. Buyer does. Now look at the abbreviations of the companies. I called one of them N. I called the other J. Who pays the freight, N or J? Don't say anything. Now say something. N. Say it. N. N. N's the buyer. N pays the freight. FOB shipping point terms 210 net 30. The next sentence. N pays the freight. Surprise, surprise to no one. You knew that. We established that. That's expected. N pays the freight of $400 on June 11th. Damaged goods totaling $300 are returned to Jay for credit on June 12th. The fair value of these goods is $70. On June 19th, N pays Jay in full less the discount. Both companies use a perpetual inventory system. Instructions. A. Prepare separate entries for each transaction on the books of N. B. Prepare separate entries for each transaction on J's books. The merchandise purchased by N on June 10th had cost J $4,800. I repeat what I said at the beginning. We could do all of J's entries from start to finish and then do all of N's. I choose, I would like for us to do these entries side by side from both points of view and talk about it. One of the things that we need to be alert for is who recorded the transaction first and why. One of the things that we should be alert for would be when do we have a deal? When do we have a buyer and a seller who are entering into this agreement and have made an agreement and therefore we have a transaction because of it. <coughs> One of the things that I think we ought to entertain as a topic of discussion and enlightenment is source documents that should accompany these transactions. You've heard business transactions create source documents. We have to analyze them and journalize them. And we're all very aware that the business world is changing there are still electronic representations of these things that we're going to describe of, that support the events that we're recording. And we ought to talk about those along the way. To illustrate that, let's uh, kind of pretend as we go along with this, I started to say the real world, but that's a pretend too. <laughs> let's have two pretend things going along together with each other. We're going to all work for the same company. And I'm going to conclude that I need markers to do my job better. Markers that write good, high quality, cheap. Markers. Can I just go to the nearest marker store and buy markers in the name of the company? 
yes or no, I have an opinion. We all work for the same company. You need something to do your job better in the company. Can you go out and buy that thing in the name of the company? Doesn't it depend on the company? Well, it probably depends on a lot of stuff. But I'm trying to get, get you to you're just kind of go with the flow for a second. And yes, technically, you're right. You're very right. But I wanted just to kind of feel you out for a second. Is it okay if each and every one of us goes out and buys in the name of the company? Yes or no? No, no, no. Let's do a little straw poll. Let's do show hands so I can call it. Yes? No? Last hour it was 50-50. I didn't count them, but it was so 50-50 it was incredible. And this hour it's overwhelmingly no. I don't know what you're thinking, but I'm thinking that in medium size and large companies, we don't have control if everybody can go out and buy in the name of the company. Generally, in a company of any size, there would be a department that would specialize in that, the purchasing department, the purchasing agent. It would be a power that's vested in <coughs> one group of individuals, one individual. And there would also be a bureaucracy, if you want to call it that, order, organization, that would lead up to that happening. So. How can I, who needs markers, communicate with the powers that be that they need to buy me something? There's a form for that. If you know its name, be willing to say it to me. If you don't know its name, I'll tell you, and that's never as good. I'd like you to discover it with me. Brian, your hand was up. That's a good wrong answer. As a matter of fact, that's the right answer for some other question I'm going to ask in a few minutes. I need markers. What am I going to fill out? The first form that I need to fill out. Didn't hear you. A request form? Actually, that's close to a right answer. It's got the same root word. It's called a purchase requisition. A purchase requisition with request being the root word here. Please, would you buy me some markers? What journal tree are we gonna make for this? I need a hand up. We need to go faster. Talon? Nothing. Alina? Mika? No. I couldn't fool you on that? No. I got three people in the room. You didn't know what it was, but you know that we don't make a journal report. Thank you. <laughs> that was the important part, way to go. No. I said at the beginning of this, if we've got a willing buyer and a willing seller, we've got a deal and we'll write it down. This is just an internal thing. This is going up through the powers that be in the organization saying, Ray Greg needs more markers to do his job better. As a matter of fact, when it gets to the right department, they might go to the cupboard where they keep markers and might be able to fill it out of inventory that they have right here on the premises, and that might be the end of the line. Or, on the other hand, if they go to the cupboard and the cupboard is bare, then it's their job to shop the world over for the best, long-lasting, cheapest marker that they can find. And let's say that they've decided to buy from J Company. What is the form that we're going to fill out to give to J Company to tell them we want to buy from them. It has a name. If you know its name, hold up your hand and be willing to talk to me. I would guess. Talon? It would be an order form? If we're playing uh, partial completion, you'd get 50%. Can you repeat what you said? Pardon me? Can you repeat the question? I don't know if I can or not. I'll try. <laughs> what form are we going to use to communicate with the seller that we would like to buy from them? Brian? Purchase order. Speak up, Brian. A purchase order. This is called a purchase order. As a matter of fact, it's so commonly called a purchase order that nobody calls it a purchase order. They call it a PO. Do y'all know what a P&L is? I need one hand up. What's a P&L? It's an income statement. Somebody raise your hand. Tell me what gross margin is. Chris? No. What's gross margin, Alina? What's gross margin, Brooke? Gross profit. 
gross profit. In Monday's lecture, I called an income statement a P&L. I had that on the screen. You saw the visual for that. But I also had gross profit on the screen and said, Dr. Green calls it gross margin. And a lot of people do. And I was just reviewing that to reach this point. What's the name of this, Brian? It's called a purchase order. Does anybody say purchase order? No. Most people say PI. So let's be wild and crazy for a second. Oh, let's, first of all, let's make this a journal. Make me a journal, I'm please, to record the PO. Volunteer? Quickly? Debit? <coughs> Brian? <coughs> Elena? <coughs> Your hand is up. Oh, um, I think none. Brian? We don't make any. It's, an, it's a trick. We've got a, I want to buy from you. Is this a deal? No. We don't have a deal yet. We're still shopping. Now, we've decided to buy from Jay. How are we going to communicate with Jay that we would like to buy from them? This is your chance to be normal and out of the ordinary. I'm asking you for some normal answers, and I'm asking you for some creative kind of answers. Last hour, we got 20 possibilities of ways that we could communicate with them, some modern, some not so modern. I need a lot of volunteers. Let's try to break the record. Talon, name me a way that we could communicate with Jay that we want to buy from them. In person. We could go to their store, <coughs> visit them in person. Hands up, let's go faster, Joe. We could go to their website. Chris, email. we could email them. Michael, phone call. we could call them on the phone. Brooke, we could fax, we could fax them. Elena, we, we don't have to be through a catalog. We just prepare a purchase order and put it in an envelope, put a stamp on it. Snail mail. Come on. Think out of the box. Elena. Like a middleman? Like the people who you have somebody else do your buying? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Name me one. We did. Meet with the sales representative at their store. Oh, we could place the order with the salesperson who visited your store, your your location. Matt, was there something you want to say? Oh. Nobody's using out of the box thinking, Matt. A skywriter. That's what I'm talking about. What is that? What is <laughs> Come on, let's name a bunch of these. Come on, think. Chris, your hand. Where's your hand up? Yeah. Well, that's not quite the way the answer came last hour. You know, Facebook used to be this little individual social network. Now how many companies have Facebook pages, yeah. sites? I think you could go to their site on Facebook. Talon? You could use one of those like message pigeons or doves? A carrier pigeon. Now we're talking. <laughs> Here we go, Alina. Intercession. Intercession. <laughs> that one's never been named. Surprisingly enough, that one's never been named. Let's go faster. Tweet them. Tweet them. I heard another one over here. Uh, Text them. Morse, Morse code. code. That's what I was going to say. Huh? Beeper? As uh, in a pager? Yeah, yeah. Pager hasn't been named in a few years. It was named last hour, too. Smoke Ta signals? Huh? Smoke signals. That's what I'm talking about. Pony Express. Pony What? Telegram. 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 Write a message on a rock and throw it in their window. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I like it. Telephone cups. Hands <laughs> <laughs> on a wire. <laughs> um, how about those flags or those lights that they use on ships? Navy kind of thing. You with me? That's two more. I think we beat the record last hour. Did y'all hear some normal ones? Yes. Did you hear some abnormal ones? Yeah. Very much. Part of that is how the world's changed. I mean, we could do historical timeline here. 
how many of these recent ones were on the list just not very long ago? I mean, was Tweet on the list last year? Or Facebook on the list the year before? Y'all with me here? And facts is falling off the list pretty fast. You know, we used to have to fill the fax machine in our office over there a couple of times a day. It'd run out of paper. <laughs> We'd nearly go all semester long before we put any more paper in the fax machine these days. I'm seeing fax machines show up at garage sales and flea markets. Do we have to have the fax machine quite the way we did just a few years ago? I don't think so. Business is changing fast because of technology. But that doesn't mean that there doesn't need to be some representation of this form of documentation that we're talking about. So let's take the list of 23 or 24 that we named and narrow it back down to the few reasonable ones, maybe the top three, four, or five or so. How are we going to communicate this to Jay? I want to buy from you. Well, let's do snail mail. Let's do, we've got a form, we filled it out, we put it in an envelope, we stamped it, we mailed it. Let's be Jay for a while. If I'm standing over there, I'm in the buyer. When I try to walk over here, I'm Jay, the seller. How are we, Jay, going to respond to this envelope coming into the mail, I rip the envelope open, I take out the purchase order, I look at it. Our response is? Yeah, that's where I'm going. But I want to know emotionally what you're feeling right this minute. Cha-ching. I could not get a response out of the last hour. <laughs> Have y'all thought about the mission statement of our company lately? Have you thought about why you're in business? Huh? To, for such a time as this, huh? Mm -hmm. we, we've got an $8,000 order right here in our hand. Anybody excited about this business? Yes. I'm, I'm praising the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. <laughs> rejoice how? A source document. What's our response to, they say they want to buy from me. I say, I, I want to sell to you. How do I say that? With what form? Right? Invoice. It's called an invoice. So, we prepare the invoice. We pack the boxes. We call Mac, the truck driver. We say, Mac, come on over here. We got a delivery for you. These are going to end company. Take them up. Are we ready to make an entry yet? Mm -hmm. Purchase requisition. Now we entry. Purchase order. Now we entry. Invoice. No entry. No entry. Entry. No entry. Entry? Entry. My question is, who knew first? Who recorded this transaction first? The buyer or the seller? Who knew first? I think the seller does. I think we might be counting angels on a pinhead right now, but I think the seller knows first. When the seller prepares the invoice, they know we've got a deal. We already know how N feels about this. Jay's responding, I want to sell to you. I'm preparing this invoice. We've got a deal. Make me an entry on the seller's books to record this sale. Too many people in this room know how to do this for there to be a long pause right this minute. Would one of you help me, please? I think I just established that. <laughs> Who knew first? We're recording an invoice on the seller's books. Maybe. Okay, so you are going to debit cash. Did we get cash? Our debit accounts receivable. Which is it? Accounts receivable. How do you know? Because you have not received money from that. Show account. me proof in this problem. <laughs> um, but 
Oh wait, oh, but for the marker situation, are we doing like the real one now? Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry, I thought we were supposed to do that. Okay, so... Bless her heart. <laughs> <laughs> she volunteers and gets this. <laughs> <laughs> no one here will volunteer. She purchased $8,000 worth of merchandise, but you haven't received that $8,000 yet. So you're going to there is some bit of evidence that tells me this was not a cash transaction. Talon? It's because later some of the goods were damaged. And no. So no. No. For credit. no. Mika? Oh. Those returns? No. Perpetual. No. Brooke? That's a yeah. question, bro. Just kidding. What'd you just say? Oh, I <laughs> no, said, it's 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 sorry, I thought. It, what, what was the rest of it? It's because of terms. It's because Sam. Because of the terms. Sam. Two, ten, net, thirty. Thank you. <laughs> it says two, ten, net, thirty. What does that mean, Alina? It means that. <laughs> that we got cash? No, that if they pay. Don't tell me all that stuff. Yeah. Just give me the general. It means that it's on account. Thank you. <laughs> It was on account. So, make me an entry. Okay, you're going to debit accounts receivable Excellent. for $8,000. Excellent. And then you are going to credit inventory for, no, wait, because it's not that same amount of inventory, so. Let's do that. Let's do that. Debit accounts receivable. Huh? I need some markers. Somebody fill me out of them. Purchase requisition, please. <laughs> Let's try this. Debit, accounts receivable, credit, inventory. I could have sworn I heard you say inventory no. before <laughs> you look back at the cheat. I mean, the note taking guy from his land. How about debit, <laughs> accounts receivable, 8,000, credit, inventory. Was the number 4,800? Can somebody look in the problem and tell me whether that's true or not? Never says I think so, right yeah. at the very bottom, at the very end it does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Could I have your undivided attention right this minute? In Monday's lecture, right at the end, a little past your attention span, <laughs> I said, this is real important, I'm trying to get you to buy in. The most common mistake I hear is debit accounts receivable, credit inventory. I think there's some logic to that. Let's be at Walmart just for a second. Bleep. Bleep, bleep. There's two things going on in the cash register. Mm -hmm. And you seem to want to turn them into one. They are earning revenue and they are incurring an expense. And we often, Alina, last hour the person didn't make this mistake. And they didn't get to learn this. I heard it doesn't matter. I, I'd, I'd rather you not. I'd rather us bask in this just for a second to let everybody in here learn this lesson once and for all and not make this mistake anymore. Y'all with me or not? It, it is debit accounts receivable, credit inventory for different amounts? No. Debits and credits have to equal. This is retail. This is cost. This is not right. I'll need to make me an entry to record the sale. <clears throat> okay, so you're gonna Debit, accounts receivable, and credit sales. Debit, accounts receivable, and credit sales for how much? $8,000. $8,000. Good. Thank you. May I have a new volunteer? Bleep. 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 There's two things going on at the cash register. We're halfway there. Chris, what else happened <coughs> at the cash register? They sold goods up there. They did. What entry we're going to make? Cost of goods sold. For and well, debit, cost of goods debit, cost of goods sold, and credit inventory for forty-eight hundred dollars. Yes, Chris. Yes, class. It takes two entries to record a sale under perpetual procedures. One to record the revenue that we've earned. One to record the expense of those goods helping us earn that revenue. Could we just look at this one entry for a second? I did this in Monday's lecture, it's still too important. If you don't have it yet, here's another chance. We bought those goods to put them on the shelf because they look nice. No? 
We bought those goods to put them on the shelf so that we could sell them. The prettiest picture of all is that good in the shopping cart, at the cash register, on the way out the front door, in the trunk of the car. Yes? yes. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that that asset turns into an expense at the cash register. That good on the shelf helped us earn revenue. That expense that we incurred, cost of goods sold, helped us earn revenue. That's what retailing is all about. So, we put a copy of the invoice in the box. Here, Mac, deliver these goods. We're over here on ends dock. Mac backs up. He starts unloading boxes out on the dock. It's like Christmas. Y'all like getting packages? Yes or no? This is pretty fun. We rip open one of those boxes, and sure enough, in the top of that box, there's a copy of the invoice. And being the well-trained, loyal employees that we are, we turn and go immediately to the office and make a journal entry on ends books for the acquisition of these goods. Who will do it for me? Brian. What kind of an account is inventory? It's normal balance is debit or credit? Debit. What happened to it when you credited it? Is it okay to make a mistake in here? Yeah. Would you like another chance? Yeah. Make me an entry. You would debit inventory for $8,000 and you would credit accounts payable for $8,000. Debit inventory, credit accounts payable. You bought some goods, you have them now, you owe for them, you didn't pay for them. Debit inventory, credit accounts payable. You said inventory is an asset. Yes. Goes on the balance sheet or income statement? Closed, on the sheet. closed or not closed? not closed? Who made me this entry? I forgot. Chris, what kind of an account is cost of goods sold? Goes on the balance sheet or the income statement? The income statement. Closed or not closed? closed? In which step? Good. Who made me this entry? Alina. What kind of an account is sales? It's a revenue account. It's, a revenue account. it's normal balance is? Credit. Goes on the balance sheet or income statement? Income statement. Closed or not closed? Closed. In which step? First. Good. I should have done that with each one of those entries and I forgot. I had a little catching up to do. So it takes two entries under perpetual procedures to record a sale. How many entries does it take to record a purchase, Brian? Just one. So you were in the office, you made this entry, you walked back out on the dock, and you see Mac, the truck driver, standing there looking like the bell captain in a black and white movie. Y'all too young to see that picture? Huh? You have no clue what I'm talking about? Can you help me out? Huh? You need to pay the, the, the bell captain in the black and white movie is in the hotel room having delivered the luggage and he's standing there waiting on the tip. Oh. Yes, that's what I'm trying to portray. And Mac, the truck driver, he doesn't have his hand out. But he's hum hawing around. He's talking about what a beautiful day it is. He's talking about the OU game last week. He's talking about, you know, he's just stalling, hoping that you'll realize why he's still there and you'll cough up the money. It says in the problem, we in paid Mac. Make me in. Brooke? Um, you debit inventory and you credit cash for 400 How about debit freight in, credit cash? No. How about debit freight out? No. What's wrong with freight out? Because we are the buyer. It's going the wrong direction. These goods are freight outs when they're going the other direction. Right, but it's These goods are coming in. Right. Freight in. No, it's just part of inventory. Why? Well, I don't know, but I just know it's part of inventory. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're supposed to know if you volunteer for the entry. This is part of the cost of the product that we're recording. We bought these goods. This is the cost principle being walked out. We didn't pay 8000 for these goods. We paid $8,400 for these goods. Are you all with me or not? Mm -hmm. This is part of the cost 
of these goods we bought. This is how we do it under perpetual procedures. Good, Brooke. And this does not involve the seller at all. There is no equivalent entry on the seller's books. This was FOB shipping point. This was the buyer's deal all along. The buyer's taking care of it. The seller's not involved. So, you walk back out on the dock. You pay Mac. Mac gets in the truck, he revs his engine, he starts toward the gate. And at last, you get to look through all the styrofoam peanuts and reach in the box and pull one out. Ugh. <laughs> this is yellow, and pretty ugly yellow. And I ordered green, didn't I? Y'all saw me order green, yes? Ugh. So, somebody stop Mac, don't let him get away. I'm going to reach and find some piece of scratch paper around here and some thick felt tip pen, and I'm going to write them an angry note. You sent me yellow ones. You know I specifically ordered green ones, and if you think I'm paying for these, you are wrong. I have no intention of paying for these. In fact, I'm considering never doing business with you again, period. Fine. Think I should sign it? Yeah. They'll probably recognize my handwriting, don't you think? You stuff that in that box, you tape it back up. Here, Mac, take these back. We're not going to talk about who pays the freight. That's not a part of today's lesson. So you're over here on Jay's dock, and here comes Mac again. Mac, right. you get lost? I thought I sent you over to N Company. What are you doing back here today? Oh. They wanted me to bring this box back to you. You might want to read that note they left you in there. Oh, really? So you rip the box open and you see the angry note and you think about all the other orders they've placed with you. And you think about what a valuable customer they are and you think about how much you want them to do business with you again. And you reach in your desk drawer and tear off a form printed specifically for this purpose and you roll it in your typewriter Y'all don't know what a typewriter is, don't you? <laughs> yes. Yes. And you type in your best, kindest words. Oh, we're so sorry for the inconvenience. Yes, we shipped you yellow ones because we didn't have any green ones, but if those are unacceptable for you, well, we're glad to provide you with some green ones, and no, you don't have to pay for these yellow ones, and we do look forward to you doing business with us again. What's the name of this piece of paper that in company prepared it belongs on this list if you know tell me if i have to tell you i'm willing mika i'm guessing or return didn't hear you a return uh, it's got a name better return, than return. a good try <coughs> what's the name of this document no because we're the buyer. Oh, yeah. One last call. What's the name of this document, you suppose? This is called a debit memo. A debit memorandum. A debit memo. I wonder why they named it that. If a debit memo could talk, what would it say? Would y'all fill in some blanks for me? What I owe you, I call accounts, speak up, payable. Accounts payable's normal balance is, I, can't, I hear five people talking. There's more than that in here. What I owe you, I call accounts, accounts payable's normal balance is, I'm sending these goods back and I have no intention of paying for these and I'm going to reduce my accounts payable account with you by, speak up. I got one person responding. I led you to the water. Would you take a big drink right now? What I owe you, I call accounts. Its normal balance is. I'm sending these goods back and I'm not intending to pay for them. And to reduce my account with you, I'm going to debit, debit it. A debit memo. I wonder why they called it that. Did anybody notice there was a special form printed in this drawer that we could type on? Yes? For such a time as this? 
wonder what his name is. Wonder what his name is. <laughs> Elena? A credit memo? This is called a credit memo. I'm wondering why the rest of you didn't jump to that same conclusion. It's called a credit memo. Wonder what a credit memo says. What you owe me, I call accounts. Its normal balance is, I'll gladly accept these goods back from you. No, you don't have to pay for them. I'll reduce what you owe me by speak up, crediting it. What's the difference between a debit memo and a credit memo? Simply put, from where it comes from, the buyer or the seller. Point of view. That's what you said. That's just my way of saying it. It's how you look at it. It's point of view. Which has the greater authority, the debit memo or the credit memo? Credit. Got an opinion? Credit memo. I think the credit memo has greater authority. And now, and this is just an opinion, sort of. But you can return all the goods you want to, but until they're willing to accept them back and let you off the hook, you're not off the hook, right? I think that the credit memo has the, the, the greater authority, and sometimes business people will wait until they get the credit memo to write it down. But I'm afraid that if we don't write it down at the debit memo stage, we might forget about it. Do y'all remember way back in chapter two when we were demonstrating journal entries for the first time that you were to write an explanation for every journal entry you made? But then I said, if you did it in that first assignment, I'll forgive you from doing that the rest of the year, and you can just skip lines between your entries, yes? This is a real good use for that blank line. What if you wrote it down at the debit memo stage knowing you didn't have a deal, and you skipped a line? Then when the credit memo came, you wrote, oh, we got a credit memo, and now we're off the hook for sure on the blank line. You with me? I've seen it done that way. So, we need to make an entry. Let's make the entry on the buyer's books first, the debit memo first. The debit memo had less authority, but we don't want to lose track. I need a volunteer. Who's willing to make me the entry for the debit memo? Chris? Debit accounts payable for 300 and credit inventory. Debit accounts payable and credit inventory. Chris, I gave some advice in Monday's lecture. I'm wondering if you followed it. It's a good chance you didn't since you don't even know what I'm talking about. Which advice? Well, I was hoping you knew about entries like this. It's okay not to know. You got it right. And when you get it right and not follow my advice, I admire you. Good job. Way to go. Tell him you remembered my advice. Yeah, when you have like a return or something, two words. you can treat it almost like a two reversing words. entry. Two. That was a whole paragraph. <laughs> I'm looking for two words, Mika. First entry. No. No. You have to go back. Go back and look. <laughs> go back and look. Well, look back. I was thinking look back. <laughs> Might have been a thousand entries ago. But when you look back, you have a greater chance of getting this right, maintaining the right point of view, makes it easier on you, things go well. Now, you got it right. You may have looked back and not realized it, <laughs> but you got it right, and I'm not complaining. If you get it right without following advice, I like it. But if you need help, or if you miss it and didn't follow my advice, that's when I get to rub your nose in. Look back. If you look back at the original entry, this one, we want to undo this. Chris, say your entry for me, please. Accounts payable, debit is for 300, inventory, credit. Debit accounts payable and credit inventory. We sent those goods back. We don't have to pay for them. We don't have them anymore. We've decreased accounts payable and decreased inventory. Right, Chris? Right, class? Mm -hmm. I need a volunteer to make me the entry for the credit memo on Jay's books. Mika? I'll try. I like try. Okay, you would debit, um, like, uh, uh, return allowances or 
right? Returns allowances for whatever, right? Is um, that the name of the account? Do it called uh, purchase return allowance. Or sales return Sales allowance. return allowance. Which is it? Sales return allowance. Why? Because the sale and it's yeah. return. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then you Don't get smart with me. Okay. <laughs> and then you could credit accounts like um, for account, accounts receivable. No. Did you follow my advice? Yeah, a little bit. And you got it a little bit right. What's the other part? No, you got it all right. Oh, okay. But you struggled with it a little bit more than you might have if you had followed my advice. Mika, it's this entry we want to undo. Uh -huh. This is the entry you should have looked back to. Oh, yeah. So is your entry, debit, sales, returns, allowances, and credit accounts receivable, exactly the opposite of that entry, yes or no? No. It depends on how you define exactly. Yeah. And I'm going to say, yes, it is. And I'm leading you to this too. Hey, Mika, what kind of an account is sales returns and allowances? What kind of account? Asset liability capital revenue expense. 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 <laughs> You're trailing off on me. I can Wait, hear you less and less. Is a liability? No. Is it okay if Talon helps you? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Talon, what kind of an account is sales returns and allowances? Contra revenue. It's um. contra revenue, contra sales. This is the debit side of that. So I go back to the question I asked a moment ago. Is this entry the exact opposite of this one? And some people in the room said, no, it's not. Because you were going by the letter of the law. It is not debit sales credit accounts receivable. But it is, in my opinion, the opposite of this entry because this is a debit to sales. It's just in a special account. Mika, this is a contra revenue account. Yes or no? Yeah. Sales returns and allowances goes on the balance sheet or the income statement, Mika? Wait, wait, is that what you say? Sales returns and allowances goes on the balance sheet or the income statement? Not income statement. <laughs> the balance income statement. <laughs> Goes on the balance sheet of the income, income statement. statement. Income statement. Is it closed or not closed? Talon, is it closed or not closed? It's closed. In which step? The second step. In the second step, we close nominal debits. We used to say expenses. We but close nominal debits, and this is a nominal account with a debit balance. It gets closed in the second step along with the expenses. Alina? Wouldn't it go on the income statement? It, it does go on the income statement. It's offset against revenue. She said income statement. But then I went on to, in which step is it closed? She said balance, she said balance income statement. Yeah. And then later she said income statement. I said balance, and then I was changing it to it. <laughs> okay, are we clear on closing entries? Why this is closed in the second step? Hey class, how many step, how, how many entries does it take to record a sale under perpetual procedures, say a number? Four. Can't hear you. Two. 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 It takes two entries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then how many entries should it take to record a return? Two. 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 We've made one. I need a volunteer to make me the second entry. Chris? Um, debit inventory for 300 and credit. Um, debit inventory for 300 and then credit cost of goods sold for seven. <coughs> The debits and credits should equal. Okay, let the record show, first of all, before we quibble about the numbers, that Chris followed my advice. You ask me how I know? Because I saw it. Chris, Chris's eyes were on the screen. He looked at this entry to choose his account titles and the order in which he chose them. He said, debit inventory, credit cost of goods sold, and he's right. Right, Chris? Now, the amount was the one given in the book. 
when I was pretending markers earlier today, they were the wrong color, and we probably sent them back and they put them on the shelf and they're gonna sell them to somebody else. <laughs> But if these are defective in some way, that's that fair value, that scrap value thing, then maybe these are trash and we're ultimately gonna to have to figure out a way to deal with them and reduce inventory because of them. We don't know all that. We're basing this on the facts that we were given in the problem. Okay, Chris? Okay, class? Okay. Yes? yes? Two entries to record a sale, two entries to record a return. Look back is good advice to follow. There's one thing left to do, and that is the exchange of cash to complete this cycle. We buy goods, we return some, we pay for them. Let's talk about the source document that we're talking about right this minute from the buyer's point of view. How is the buyer going to pay for these goods? What source document will it be? Say something quick. It's the easiest one. No. It's wrong point of view. Transaction. A check. I was trying to get you to say. We're going to pay for these goods with a check. We need to know all the facts. The buyer's going to originate this. The buyer's got the invoice. The buyer's got the copy of the, uh, the credit memo. The buyer's going to make all the calculations, address the envelope, put the stamp on it. Let's make it a group project. Let's let lots of people participate here, see how fast we can get this one to come about. If you know one account title of debit or credit, say it for me right this minute. Which debit accounts payable or credit accounts payable, Brian? It's debit accounts payable. Give me some account titles, class. Somebody help me out here. Debit accounts payable and credit in a minute, maybe. It's not the cash. We ought to see and understand this is a payment to a creditor on account. It's debit accounts payable credit cash. My favorite place to start is with this accounts payable amount. If you know that amount, say it to me right this minute. If you don't know that amount, I'll help you find it. We owe them $8,000. Yes or no? None? We owe them $8,000 minus the $300 of goods we return to them. We owe them $7,700, and when we write this check, we will owe them nothing. Is this check going to be written for exactly $7,700? No. More than $7,700 or less than $7,700? Say something. Less. It says so in the problem. Did we pay for this on time, Chris? Yes. We did. This check should be written for 98% of that amount, 2% less than that amount. Can you do 2% of $7,700 in your head? Yeah. 1% yeah. would be $77, 2% would be double that, that's 154? Yes. Is my math right? Yeah. yeah. Subtract 154 from 77, get? $7,500. $7,546. Seven thousand five hundred and forty-six. Is that what I heard you say? Yes. yes. I thought Debbie's credit said equal. They do. They don't. I got two people saying this to me. Could you engage with me, please? I thought Debbie's credit said equal. They do. They do. They don't. They will. They will when, Chris. I wanted to ask a question. I know you did, you but I'm not ready for that yet. I want to know what you said to me a minute ago. Inventory one. How about purchase discount? I'm not saying. How about sales discount? Why not sales discount? Somebody in the room? We're the purchase. We're the buyer. We're the buyer. How about purchase discount? That's next week. <laughs> We're the buyer. <coughs> What's the appropriate account type? Chris? Is it inventory debit or inventory credit, Chris? Credit. It's inventory credit for what we say a minute ago. 156, Chris? No. 154. 54. Sorry. Why is it inventory, Chris? Um, because we don't have 8,000 worth of inventory anymore. It's, we that's, have 7, that's almost right. 
but not quite. No, no, no. We have 7,700 in inventory, but we really didn't pay 7,700 for those goods. Right. This is the cost principle being walked out. Right. This is the true cost was 7,546. So we need to get the inventory to say that we're reducing the inventory to the true cost. Right. The exercise would have you make one additional entry from the seller's point of view. The buyer mailed a check for $7,546 to the seller in full payment of their account. The seller accepts that check, $7,546, in full payment of the account. We need to credit accounts receivable for the full $7,700 to get that amount off the books. They don't owe us anything. We need to debit cash for the $7,546 that we received in cash. The postman didn't keep any for themselves. The, the check was delivered intact. We've got another one of those, but I thought debits and credits had to equal situations. A debit to cash of $7,546, a credit to accounts receivable of $7,700 doesn't balance. We need to get this entry in balance by debiting sales discount. If we were in class, I'd be asking you, is it sales discount or purchase discount? And you'd say, sales discount. I'd say, why? You'd say, because we're the seller. Is it sales discount or is it inventory? No, it was inventory from the buyer's point of view. We were trying to carry out the cost principle. From the seller's point of view, We've recorded revenue at $7,700 and we didn't earn all that revenue. We reduced the amount of revenue that we earned by the 154 discount that we granted. That 154 discount should reduce sales. Debiting sales discount will reduce sales by that amount. We should debit cash for $7,546. Debit sales discount. It's contra sales. Debit sales discount for 154 and credit accounts receivable with the full amount. Um, I'm dismissing you. Thank you very much. I'll entertain questions. Chris has got one. He gets to go first. The rest of you have a nice day and a nice week.